In government news, Monday morning, the Board of Health met and began their meeting with an update on the status of Nord Hospital. Joan Jacobs, Board of Health member and member of the Board of Directors at the hospital, provided an update. They talked about the um, LaRusso building being torn down because the roof drains did not um, were not able to handle all the rain that came down, so it opened the roof up there and it came down from the third floor to the second floor to the first floor and eventually into, you know, the basement. But, um, and they figured it wasn't worth trying to find all the mold that would build up. It was less costly to tear it down and put up a new one than it would be to um, renovate the whole hospital itself. Um, the Young Dow building is going to remain. There was no damage there whatsoever. And um, I guess the cath lab um, made out pretty well. The um, rest, the cafeteria, I guess, was absolutely destroyed from what I saw. Um, the brand new cafeteria was just decimated. There was nothing left. I mean, it was just, it was a horrible <coughs> thing. Really so um, they're planning on having the emergency room open from, well, it was two weeks, almost two weeks that we met. Um, they said four to six weeks, big it, two months um, before the emergency room is open. And then the second phase will be the um, cardiac cath will be open because they can't do that sooner because they need beds for the people that are having that procedure done. So then in the second phase, they're going to have 15 beds available for that and any emergency room um, things that are coming up. Later in the meeting, Public Health Director Segal Reese provided the board with the current COVID numbers in Norwood and around the state. Um, the state... Every, every Wednesday, the state issues a town-by-town -town report, and they really they revamped it uh, last week to um, report different numbers. Um, I actually think the numbers they're reporting are more indicative of what's happening now. It's a lot of things relative to the last 14 days, um, but it really changed. Um, you know, we were tracking things with the old data they were reporting. Now they're reporting new data, so it kind of, we can't track it week by week, um, although I assume the data will stay uh, the same going forward. So. Um, some highlights from the data they report was um, our percent positive is really low. It's at 1.7 percent over the last 14 days um, compared to the state, which is 2.25. So um, that's a great number. Uh, we continue to have a good testing rate, um, at, uh, which is higher than than the state rate. So that's just something to compare it to. Um, overall, our our case numbers. Um, is 584 but again um, a more accurate number is sort of the week by week count that i report out um, and it's only really a handful of cases every week um, under 10 in the last in the last eight weeks so um, our numbers continue to look good um, just like across the state and uh, continue to be low to end the meeting the board discussed the fall hazardous waste day which is scheduled for september 26th the health department plans to still host this event and will provide safe social distancing guidelines as the event gets closer. The next meeting for the Board of Health will be September 8th. Monday night, Mark Ryan joined the Sustainability Commission to discuss the effects of the June 28th rainstorm and the town's stormwater infrastructure. DPW Director Ryan explains part of the reasoning behind the town's unprecedented flooding in conjunction with the stormwater drainage capacity. Uh, we literally saw nearly six inches of rain in less than 12 hours. Um, between four and four and a half inches of that uh, fell within 90 minutes, which is just something, I mean, my tenure at Norwood for 21 years and in my lifetime, lifelong resident, I, I've never seen anything quite like that, Mr. Chairman. Um, it just, the intensity was so great. It came down and there is no drain system uh, designed to handle that kind of intensity. Typically, uh, stormwater systems are designed, at least the street drain systems, handle a 10-year storm. It's a storm that has a 10% uh, chance of happening any given year. And that, uh, that design storm is 4.6 inches in 24 hours. And we got almost all of that within 90 minutes. So you could see where, why you know, streets were flooded, why Houses were inundated with, with water, where roadways literally looked like rivers. It was uh, absolutely uh, incredible. Other agenda items included subcommittee updates, which include energy, education and outreach, and public health.
The next Sustainability Commission meeting will be August 17th. The Zoning Board of Appeals met briefly Tuesday evening. The board approved two special permit requests, both for additions. One located at 1 Warren Street and the second located at 230 Sunnyside Road. Scheduled for 7.45 p.m., the board met with representatives of 1369 Boston Providence Turnpike to approve a request for modification. The ZBA's next meeting will be in August. The school committee convened Wednesday evening. Kate Sibling Dunn and Jenny Wu from the Progress Nord Cultural Competency Team gave an address to the committee regarding potential social and cultural challenges students and teachers may face. A lot of discussion the committee had and will continue to have in the coming weeks revolves around school's reopening plan. More updates will be presented to the committee in the next few meetings. However, Dave Thompson presented three different return to school models that the district may be implementing throughout the year. So for in-person, and, and this is a general piece, we're, we're looking at you know using the three feet, and three feet is seat to seat. Um, it's, it's not desk to desk, it's seat to seat. Um, and that is closer than the six foot norm. When we do that, we can get close to about 75% capacity, maybe a little bit higher um than uh what we would expect so the hybrid we're talking about all the import all the above but we are looking at, at closer to a six foot uh social distancing piece classes would be in person uh and then work remotely with supervision attendance would be taken and these would be graded assignments and so those are uh are changes that would be part of any remote piece but i'm introducing it here in the hybrid model so the hybrid schedule. So we are leaning, examining a two-day in-person, three-day remote model at this point, a blue cohort and a gold cohort, if you will. So if the blue cohort would do Monday, Tuesday in person, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday would be remote. The other group, the other cohort would be Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday remote, uh, Thursday, Friday in person. So basically everybody would be remote on Wednesday. That would give us an opportunity to do some deep cleaning if it was needed. It would give us time for collaboration and calibration. So full remote, basically kind of similar to what it was in June with the curriculum uh, work over the summer uh, that I've already mentioned. Uh, we have invested in increased technology that includes more devices in the form of Chromebooks, uh, teacher tools. We've added several teacher tools um, and software for students to use. Um, Luckily, we uh, have the have the CARES Act. There also was a technology grant that came out. We have fully accessed those uh, to help with that aspect of it. And again, uh, full remote or any remote will involve uh, graded and attendance being taken. The committee also discussed the fee schedule and established votes on the new policies that include remote learning, celebrations and observances, and reconsideration of instructional resources. The school committee will meet again next Wednesday, July 29th. For complete government coverage, tune into the NCM Government Channel or watch it on demand at norwoodcommunitymedia.org.